Well, it is very cold and pretty windy out, so I hope the audio on this turns out okay. We are in the second Sunday of Advent. During the second and third Sunday, the Gospel readings focus on the story of John the Baptist, who serves as a transition figure from the eschatological sort of focus during Christ the King Sunday in the first week of Advent to the birth of Christ, which we'll focus on at the very end of Advent. The reading for this week is taken from Mark chapter one, and the first 13 verses of Mark's gospel serve as the prologue or the introduction to his gospel. And like all good pieces of ancient literature, Mark provides us with a very stylized introduction. Mark does not tell us anything about the birth of Christ. He jumps right in with John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and this prophetic statement from Isaiah, and actually it's not from Isaiah, but we'll get to that in a moment here. The prologue or this introduction serves then to set the stage. It's sort of like the story so far, and he jumps right in to where he wants us to understand the text, and that is the introduction of Jesus by John the Baptist. In verse one, Mark tells us that this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if Mark's gospel is written first, this phrase gospel there probably shouldn't be translated that way because we don't have any other gospels yet. It should probably be translated the way it is defined in Koine Greek, and that is the euangelion. It is the good news of Jesus Christ. To see the structure of this prologue, this use of the good news is important here. In verse one, it says the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ and then at the conclusion of the prologue or the introduction in verse 14, it says that Jesus then went into Galilee and proclaimed the good news. So you see how this phrase is used at the beginning and the end of the prologue to sort of bookmark it or bookend it for us. Now the quote from Isaiah right here at the very beginning that Mark quotes really isn't from Isaiah. It starts from Isaiah, but then it goes to Exodus and then also the book of Malachi. And he combines these three quotes together. But the main point is, is that the message of Isaiah is being reinforced by his incorporation of these other two quotes into sort of this homogenized or hybrid quote that he cites for us. And the main point in Mark's quoting from the prophet Isaiah and his Exodus and then also Malachi here is that after years and years of waiting, this promised Messiah is about to come on the scene. So in this way, these quotes call us to prepare our hearts for the Messiah that is soon to appear. By incorporating this passage in the lectionary readings, what they've done is they've used this beginning quote here from Isaiah to pull from those prophetic readings that we read last week from Isaiah 64 and Mark 13, and then lead us through John's ministry into the appearance of Jesus. If you haven't watched my video on the introduction to Advent, which I covered last week, it's up here. So you can click on that or a link to it will be in the show more section down below. You definitely wanna go and see that to understand the structure of Advent and what we're talking about in this and the next two weeks videos. Now, one of the things I don't want to confuse you about here is that when Mark was written, we didn't have lectionaries yet. Rather, this is what's developed through church history and tradition, this practice of lectionary readings, going back and picking up Mark's gospel and using it in this style and format. So let's just make sure we remember historically what comes first, the chicken or the egg here, that we don't say that Mark wrote his gospel to meet these lectionary needs. The editors and the compilers of the lectionary went back and picked up this reading from Mark to fit this need for the season of Advent. Man, it is cold out. I thought I would come out into this wilderness type area here. And I'm sure that John the Baptist did not have coffee back during his day when he was out there in the wilderness preaching. Hmm. That is so good on a cold day like today. It's gonna to start snowing soon here. I can feel a few flakes coming down already, but we're gonna try and get this video done before that blows in. In the wilderness, John the baptizer began preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People from the whole Judean countryside and all Jerusalem were going out to him 
and he was baptizing them in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John wore a garment made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, One more powerful than I am is coming after me. I am not worthy to bend down and untie the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, it tells us all that Jerusalem and Judea is going down to see John the Baptist by the Jordan River. Now, this would have required a several day walk. You can see that from Jerusalem down to the Jordan River would have been a good day's walk. And then if you were up in Galilee or other regions of Judea, it would have required a fairly extensive walk. So this isn't something that they would just go down to see him on a Sunday morning. It would have been one day down. They probably would have spent two or three days there with him and then a day back. This was a major event. And it lets you know just how influential and significant John's ministry was. He wasn't just somebody off on the side doing his own thing, but he attracted a lot of attention, had a great deal of influence and impact within the religious life of Israel, even though he lived in the wilderness and was on sort of the fringes of society. Now in verse seven, we have a couple themes from John's preaching about who Jesus Christ is that are introduced. The first one is, is that he says that Jesus is stronger than he is. Now this is gonna get picked up in Mark's gospel. Mark really presents Jesus as the strong man. And immediately after this introductory section, you're gonna see Jesus coming into confrontation with various forces and showing that he is stronger than all of them in each situation. The second thing is, is that Mark tells us that he's not worthy to untie Jesus' sandal. Now this whole idea that Jesus is greater, that he is stronger, and that he has a higher position of honor and prestige than Mark really lets you know the categorical difference between Mark and Jesus. Finally, John tells us that his baptism is with water, but Jesus' will be with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the power that convicts, it transforms, it renews, it creates. This is far greater than cleansing or immersing your body with water. It transforms, it cleanses, it burns our lives so that we are renewed. Now in John's ministry of baptism, Mark tells us two important things. One, he was preaching a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And number two, the people were confessing their sins to him. Now this idea of forgiveness and confessing your sins is not unique to Christianity. It was something that was taught within the ancient rabbis. In the Babylonian Talmud, we have this great quote from Rabbi Eleazar, and he writes, repent one day before your death. His students then asked him, does a man know on what day he will die? Rabbi Eleazar answered, all the more reason to repent today, for perhaps he will die on the morrow so he will be found to be in repentance his entire life. In other words, you don't know how long you're going to live, and so repent today, because you might die tomorrow. And by adopting this mindset, Eleazar said that a person is found to be in repentance their entire life. If we go back to the general themes of Advent as a time to prepare our hearts for, during the first week, the second coming of Christ, and then during the second and third weeks, how we're preparing our hearts and transitioning to where we're finally going to reach in the fourth week to preparing our hearts for the incarnation or Jesus' birth so that we can observe Christmas. This idea of repentance and confessing is really important. Just like Lent, Advent is a season for us to prepare our hearts, and that means breaking down the hard shell of our hearts repenting from things that are wrong, and then also confessing when we need to to one another, and then also to God, asking him to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness so that we might be transformed into his likeness. Now in verses nine through 13, Jesus comes and is baptized by John, and then immediately he is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness for his temptation. And this section really is in this week's readings, but basically it shows that Jesus is led, directed by the Holy Spirit and that he is stronger than John because he is going to be tempted for 40 days within the wilderness. In verse 14, we have this transition to, and Jesus went into Galilee and began to preach the gospel. 
At this point, we have this shift. We have transition from John the Baptist who opens the gospel and is in the introduction, and now we shift completely to the focus on Jesus Christ. The compilers and editors of the lectionary then use John the Baptist as a transition figure to lead us from the Old Testament prophetic passages to the incarnation of Christ, which is going to come at Christmas. His ministry also serves as a ministry of preparation within our hearts. Like the Old Testament prophets, he calls us to repentance and to confess. It's a time of humbling ourselves before God and preparing our hearts, just as the passage from Isaiah said, prepare the way of the Lord. We are called to prepare our hearts during this season to remember both the future coming of Christ and also to observe and remember his incarnation and birth in Bethlehem. And it is getting really cold out here in the wilderness. And let me know in the comments down below if you find going out and doing field trips like this is something that you enjoy in these videos or not, or if I should stay back in my office at home and film from my desk. This is a popular trail through the Fountain Nature Center. And a few years ago, we had some pretty massive flooding along the Fountain Creek. And it washed out the trail up there for a couple hundred yards. And then over there, it washed out a bridge. The bridge that's there now is no longer safe. And what we have are these guys making this path straight again or safe again. And that's why Isaiah is talking about here. It's taken from how a king, when he approached a town or a village, the people there would go out, level the road, make it straight, so that when the king came to visit their city, he would have the best impression possible of that region. This is an illustration of what we are to do with our hearts. We are to prepare the way, get rid of the unlevel ground, get rid of the obstacles, the places where it's washed out, and to make our hearts ready for the coming of the Lord. Okay, it's time to head home. I hope you found this video beneficial. Remember, if you like this material, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I post new material, share it with other people, and leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think about these videos, and if you have any questions or suggestions, I am more than willing to entertain them. So until next week, peace.